Thank you for joining the Remnant Podcast. I am your host, Jackie Wade. God's remnant are those who acknowledge God in all of their ways, even when their ways sometimes do not please God. They are the ones who are always confessing their sins to God while believing he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here on the Remnant Podcast, we stand on the finished work of Jesus Christ, inspired and led by Holy Spirit to bring all glory to God. Lives will be changed, souls delivered, and faith will be preached and proclaimed as we declare and decree that we are kingdom individuals employed to speak into the earth realm for which we have been granted authority by God. We're going to have our um, grief, licensed grief specialist with us tonight. Her name is Yolanda Booker, and she's from Grief Speaks. Um, <laughs> and we're going to get into our topic on tonight. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. You know, God gives us strategies through every situation in the word of God. And um, he's always, always assisted us in every battle and every problem, every situation that we go through. So on tonight, we're going to go through some of those strategies and learn some coping mechanisms on how to deal with grief. So I want to encourage you to stay tuned with us on tonight. Before we go into our session this evening, I do want to have a word of prayer. I do want to have a word of prayer. Listen, don't forget to follow us on the different platforms. We're on YouTube, we're on Podbean, we're on Spotify, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Samsung. And of course, we're here tonight live on Facebook. Um, So I want to encourage you because there's other sessions that we've already spoken about that Yolanda has already spoken on as it pertains to grief and helping us cope, helping us learn those things and those strategies that will help us to continue to fight the race a good fight amen so i'm your host jackie wade i'm here on the remnant podcast once again and i want to thank you for joining me i want to ask you this evening each person that will join us um or that will look at the replay to like share and comment to like share and comment so we're going to get started. We're going to open with prayer. Yolanda, thank you for joining us once again. I'm glad to, I'm glad to be here once again. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get this uh, situated. You know, with the with the screen cutting off, I don't know if you see my whole face. I only see some of my face. So I'm, <laughs> I don't want people trying to figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> so but to God be the glory. We're here, right? Amen. We're here. We're here. So again, like I was mentioning, I want to thank you for joining in on Room the Podcast. I'm your host, Jackie Wade. Um, and this is a podcast where we expound on the word of God. We stand on the finished work of Jesus Christ, inspired and led by the Holy Spirit, to ultimately bring all glory to God and not ourselves. As I stated, lives will be changed, souls delivered and saved, and faith will be preached and proclaimed. Testimonies will be given. And we declare and decree that we are kingdom individuals employed to speak into the earth realm and in levels of dimensions for which we have been granted authority by God. Again, I'm your host, and I thank you for joining me tonight. Listen, if this is your first time looking at the podcast, if you're interested in being a part of this group, just go ahead and follow us on Facebook. You can get a free subscription at podbean.com. That way you can go through um, all of the various seasons. I think now we're on season five. We'll be coming up on two years of the podcast coming July, this upcoming July. Praise God. And Amen. I thank God for, yes, I thank God for um, just um, being, being over this podcast and ultimately giving direction. Because if Holy Spirit isn't leading, I can't, I, I don't want to do anything. So I thank God for that. I want you to also like us on Instagram. You can like that at 
the at sign, the remnant podcast. And like I stated, you can get connected with us on Amazon, Audible, Player, and Film Podcast, Added, Deezer, Samsung, Spotify, and also on YouTube. So tonight, we're going to open up in prayer. And then we're going to welcome our very own Yolanda from Grief, <laughs> Yolanda Booker, CEO from Grief Speaks. Amen. So let's pray. Tonight, you know, the Lord was speaking to me Um I took a, a little rest and he was just speaking to me about encourage my people to stay the course sometimes. And, and, and it will get hard for every, every last one of us, some point in our life. But God said, tell them to stay the course, stay on that role of rededicating yourself. If you have lost hope, if you've gotten tired, if you've gotten a little wonky, which we do, the Holy Spirit want, told me to tell you tonight to stay the course. Don't get tired. Don't get weary and well doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Amen. You will reap if you faint not. And so tonight, I want to encourage you. Again, I want to uh, thank you for coming on. Listen, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. We give yes, you praise Lord. on tonight. Lord, and I thank you for all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Christ Jesus. I thank you that as you've commanded us to get wisdom and understanding, that it must be available. It is always available to us to obtain. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, today, I pray, God, that you will release wisdom, that you will release knowledge, and that you will release understanding. I exalt wisdom and knowledge, Lord God. And I thank you, God, that it brings honor and it brings glory to you when we operate in it, God. I rebuke the spirit of fear that is trying to come against your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I silence every voice of defeat and failure, God. Father, I purge our thoughts, purge our thoughts and our memories of all the words, Lord, and all images that opposes, Lord God the knowledge of you, Father. We bring every thought captive to obey you on tonight, God. Father, and I can command the entire being, each person, to come into alignment with the truth. We resist the downward pull of darkness, and we release the light and the life of the word of God to enlighten our paths, God, and to lead us in the way that we should go. We engage the spirit of power tonight, the spirit of love and of a sound mind, we hearken to the spirit of truth that yes, guides us into all truth. Father, I thank you that each person tonight have a spirit of faith, God. And we believe, Lord God, in you, Father, the author and the finisher of our faith. Tonight, yeah. Father, we thank you that you're going to renew our minds with your words and with your thoughts, God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that your spirit, that your word, God, will enlighten us, Father, to run this race and to run it with good intention, with all of our heart, mind, and soul, God. Father, I tread upon the serpents and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt us, God. Hallelujah, Father. And I command all enemy forces and demonic spirits assigned to orchestrate anyone's downfall to remain under your feet, Father, as the footstool, Father. We refuse to break under pressure tonight. Hallelujah, God. We refuse to break under pressure, God. Yes, Father, we come up against the spirit of grief, Father, that will try to hinder your people, Father, that will try to come against their mind in the midnight hours, in the daytime, in the noon to hallelujah, Father. And Lord, we thank you right now, God, that you, Father, are giving them a newness, God, that you are revealing yourself even the more, God. Father, that you will be glorified in, in these people's lives, in our lives tonight, Father, that they will stand flat foot and know, God, who you are, Father, that you will restore the joy. Hallelujah, God. We thank you tonight, God, for being a restorer, God. We thank you tonight, God, for being a rewarder, God, of those that diligently seek you, God. Yes. And so tonight, yes. Jesus being our advocate and our covenant enforcer, Father, the apostle and the high priest of our profession, God, we thank you, God, that he has all power in his hand. So in the mighty name of Jesus, tonight I release the power of faith into the people's lives, God, that they will see, God, solutions and strategies. 
yes. God, that they will see yes. through the eyes of faith, Father. Oh, God, that they will not fall to Lord, but they will continue, God, to seek you with all of their heart, all yes, of their Lord. mind, and all of their soul. God, let them hear with the ear of faith tonight, God. I speak with the voice of faith, God, to reason with the thoughts of faith, God, to walk in the steps of faith, God, to live in the dominion of faith, God, to prevent, pro possess the currency of faith, God, to hear tonight the message of faith, God. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Plant the seeds of faith. It is according to our faith. So be it done unto us. All things are possible because we believe on the Son of God, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, Amen. we thank you. We thank you for healing. We thank you for touching our minds. We thank you for binding up the, the wounded heart, God, the broken heart, God. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you now for a supernatural release, God, that will go to each person that will receive, that they will know that it is by your grace, it is by your love, and it is by their faith, Lord God, that they are holy. We thank you. We ask now that you will speak mightily through the woman of God. Don't let this just be a podcast. God, but let the Holy Spirit, let the fire burn in her belly. That as she release, God, and those that will see tonight, and those that will look again at, at the replay, will find strategies and solutions that you've given your people for such a time as this. And we thank you. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we thank you all for joining us. Come on in. Come on in on tonight. I thank you, Yolanda, again. I know tonight's Amen. topic we're talking about help is on the way. It's such yes. an appropriate topic. So hey. I want to give it over to you. I don't want to procrastinate any longer. I want you to go ahead and, and let us know exactly we want to expound on this word on tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much for having me. I am just grateful once again to be before you. As um, Sister Jackie said, I am Yolanda Book. I am the executive um, director of and founder of Grief Speaks nonprofit organization. I am also the author of Grief Speaks Grief Journal and God's Chosen Son, which is a, um, a book that I wrote a few years back. Please excuse my voice. I think it's the allergies. I ran outside and you know the pollen is crazy out there. <laughs> but I'm just grateful again to be here tonight. And as um, Sister Jackie said, we want to help is on the way. Help is on the way. We've been talking about grief. We've been talking about the effects that it has on our lives. We've been talking about the enemy trying to trick us up and trap us up. Um, but we thank God that God come to give life and give life more abundantly. And we're grateful grateful for that tonight. But, you know, the word says that people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. And if we need wisdom, that we should ask for Amen. it. So we thank God tonight that we come to just impart some wisdom on grief tonight about coping skills. You know, so often in our, you know, we did culture and grief a few weeks back. And we talked about just how we've been taught certain things that we take on in our lives as we become adults, as we go through life experiences. And one of those things is grief. Grief, we've been taught to keep moving. We've been taught to keep working. We've been taught to, you know, not to stop. We have to be strong and all of those things. But we haven't stopped to teach people what to do about it. I am also a mental health therapist, so I use these coping skills often. I don't, um, grief is my specialty, but I, I do counsel all on mental health. So, you know, we need to know how to cope. You know, it's the same with the word. We can tell a person what the word says, but how do we apply it to our lives? What's the application? When we can apply it, 
is when it's fruitful. It's when it's effective. We can hear about it all day long. Even on today, I'm going to give you some stuff. But listen, if you don't research it and you don't practice it yourself, it's just words. But I've done my job. I come to plant seeds tonight. And that seed I'm going to plant is about coping skills. But it's up to you to work the skill. Right. I say to my clients all the time, one of my favorite um, phrases to say to them is there's no change if there's no change. You know, Amen. So often we say we walk around, you know, I'm so depressed. I'm anxious. You know, I have anxiety, you know, and all of these things. And those are real. And we do not want to downplay them at all because, you know, in our lives on a whole, but in grief for sure. But one thing that I do know is that if we want to come out, we got a job to do. You know, we want to keep it biblical here tonight. Work, faith without work is dead. Right. All day, every day. So we got to work, y'all. So I came tonight just to share with you some some ways that we can release some of our grief, release anxious feelings and depressed feelings and feeling of being overwhelmed and, you know, feelings of denial and suppression because we suppress a lot of things, you know, but there's so many avenues that we could use. I just want to tell you tonight that you can even go to Google and Google coping skills. There's a, a um, there's a publication that has 99 coping skills because you know why? Because none of us cope the same. We can live in the same house. We could lose the same person, place, or thing. Because remember tonight, and every time we speak on grief, we're talking about people, places, and things. We lose all of those, not just people. So, you know, when, but when we lose those things, we all cope differently. What works for me may not work for you. <clears throat> you know, I could tell you for myself, um, just give me a little background. I lost my son to cancer almost 10 years ago. And that's kind of how our Grief Speaks was birthed. However, um, through his journey of um, battling cancer, I journaled. And that was my coping skill. Journaling. So here's what I hear people say all the time. Let's talk about journaling a little bit. Every time I mention journaling, somebody said, I journal. But I don't do it that often. Here's the thing. There is no rhyme and reason on the way that you journal. You journal when you feel like you need to. But journaling is a good way of getting what's in the inside out. Those thoughts that you have in your mind, those suppressions, getting them out on paper. And guess what, y'all? What's so nice about journaling? When you put it on the paper, it doesn't talk. So you ever tried to? Tell somebody how you feeling. And before you get it out, they cut you off and they like, but you know, but wait, but, but I, or whatever. See, when you put it on the paper, you still, this is still a mechanism of getting it out of your mind, right. but you don't have no interruptions, right? So you can give the paper all you got. Every feeling you have, you don't have to have any regard to what the other, to who you're talking to, how they're feeling, if it's going to offend them, if you, if it's going to make you look like you don't know what you're talking about. You know, we do that. We don't share because we feel like people are going to judge us. Well, guess what? Your journal don't judge. Your journal don't talk back. Your journal doesn't cut you off. That's good. Your journal doesn't your journal doesn't tell you what you should be feeling or what you shouldn't be feeling. So journaling is a great way. And here's the thing. Journaling doesn't have to be in a book and on a piece of paper. Like I keep a journal next to my bed because God deals with me in my sleep. Um and a lot of times if I don't write it down, I don't remember because the enemy, you know, he come to still kill and destroy. So he'll snatch it. And so I have a book next to my bed. I'm usually have a journal in my pocketbook, but I always have something to write with. But if you don't want to write it, you can journal on your phone. In my notes sections in my phone, oh my gosh, it has so much of my thoughts because I have to put it down when it happens in this very moment, right? In this very moment, I need to write it down. So you could, another way is I have some of my clients record themselves because everybody can't write. Some people have arthritis or, you know, some people just don't enjoy writing. Record yourself. 
You got a big old video camera on these smartphones. Right. It's your phone. Hit record and just go to work. You know what? I'm sick and tired and I feel this and I feel that. Let's give it to the video. Mm-hmm. It's yours. Right? It's so many ways of journaling that it doesn't have to be paper and pen. Right. I, journaling, I have some who write narratives. They write the story their way. Right? I have people who another way of um, another coping skill for those of you who like music, make a playlist of the music that that you know uplift you on those times that you're down. Because here's the thing about coping skills. Listen, all of my clients are required. I require them to bring paper and pen to my sessions. But I also tell them that what we do is we build a toolbox. You can't build nothing if you don't have no tools right you need your equipment right and that's why coping skills are important because when crisis hit we all know it hit in the middle of the night or when ain't nobody around or when you're driving by yourself and it ain't nobody to call or talk to you need your toolbox your toolbox is going to have everything all of your coping skills in it because in time of crisis your mind cannot think of the th- things that you really need to be doing if you're really in crisis, right? Because all you can think about is how overwhelmed you are or how anxious you are or how depressed you are. But when you have your, look, when you have your good old uh, journal next to you, your toolbox, right? When you get that m- moment and you realize you're beginning to feel anxious, you can go to your toolbox and say, you know what? I was on that podcast one time. Um, remnant podcast and and they were talking about that and I wrote some things down. Mm-hmm. Let me go look and see what she's saying to do when I'm feeling anxious. Right, right. You have a re- a point of reference, right? God deals with us all day, every day, but He left us a point of reference, didn't He? He left us His word. We need a point of reference. We need something. How many times have you been talking to somebody and couldn't remember the scripture or couldn't remember what the pastor preached, but you can go back and get your notes and say, oh, oh, here it is. I got it. Listen, you need a point of reference. So coping skills, that's your toolbox. Build your toolbox. It's all yours. Again, I, I can't stress enough. What works for me may not work for you. But I'm just going to throw out some things tonight. Is that all right? If anybody have any questions, feel free to um, put your questions and we'll try to answer them. Um, So we we talked about journaling, right? Journaling is a good way. If you ever attended therapy, one of the first coping skills they probably taught you was deep breathing, right? Take some deep breaths, they say. Take some deep breaths. But I want to tell you why. Not only does deep breaths um take your mind off of what's happening you know like when you're in labor and they like breathe 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 but deep breaths signals the mind to calm down we did you know that we we can live off of air and water when you go to the hospital what's the first thing they do they hook you up to an iv and they give you oxygen Mm -hmm. until they figure out what's going on Because with those two things, they can sustain you. So deep breathing is one of those things. Deep breathing is taking five to seven deep breaths through your mouth and blowing through your nose and blowing it out your mouth. But you blow it out like you're blowing out a balloon or blowing out some candles. We want to do it slow. Because here's the thing. If we do it too quickly, we have a tendency to get dizzy because the mind is confused. But if you take it in slowly it tells the mind to calm down and guess what I learned that because my son had a seizure when he was alive and I didn't know what to do and the first thing the paramedics did was give him oxygen and he t- told me he said listen there's nothing we could do about this seizure but we give him oxygen to calm him down because listen how many of you have heard hopefully you haven't experienced but somebody who lost oxygen for a certain amount of time mm-hmm. the brain not getting oxygen can shorten your lifespan you know as they say it could put you in a vegetated state because the brain needs oxygen right 
So when we take those deep breaths, I'm going to tell you a secret. If you have trouble sleeping at night, begin to sit on the side of your bed when it's bedtime and bring yourself in by taking deep breaths before you go to sleep. Your body is programmable. So when you do that every night, your body will learn that when she takes these deep breaths, that means to calm down and go to sleep. For some of you who deal with anxiety, can't cut your mind off at night, take those deep breaths and do it every night. And by repetition, your, bo your body will learn that when she does these deep breaths at this time of day, it means to go to sleep. You know how... We program our kids when they're young, we put them on a schedule and no matter where you are, they fall asleep or they're really sleepy and irritable. Right. Your body is programmable and it's programmable by doing the same thing over and over. Eventually it looks for it, right? It, it looks for when you drink your body, look for it. when you smoke your body, look for it. your body looks for what you do to it. So let me ask you, you said you lost your son 10 years ago mm. and did you find that it was hard for you to sleep at night? Like, what was some things that... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, especially in the beginning, um, because your, my emotions and most people's emotions are on an all-time high, you can't cut it off and your mind is just going about all the, you know, let's be honest, all about the woulda, coulda, shouldas and why and why not and I'm angry. So you go through these things. I didn't sleep well. Um, some other areas is um, sometimes your appetite is um, affected and it can be affected in, in eating too much or not eating enough. Some of the other things is sometimes we have an upset stomach. Sometimes we have a nervous stomach. So some of us like go, continually go, use the bathroom or our stomach is just not feeling well. We do. We get insomnia and can't sleep or we we sleep in intervals like we'll go to sleep for a little while and wake up and go to sleep and wake up because the body is, you know, is so in overload. Um, I can say that anxiety hit. I, I know, excuse me, even when my son passed, I, I never realized I had anxiety, to be honest, until until after he passed, because I was so used to, again, repetition. I was so used to running home that one once he passed, I would be in the market, the nail salon, or anywhere, and I see a long line and I panic, like, oh, I got to go. I can't. I got to go on. And one day I had to stop and say, what are you rushing for? Nobody's there. My husband's at work. Nobody's home. But it was because I was so used to doing rushing home. I would get anxious if I was anywhere too long. Um, so. So I had some anxiety. Um, I had real anxiety over change. Like I remember going to a nail salon. I was just going to get a refill. And the lady told me I needed a whole set and gave me this. And girl, I almost lost it. And I had to like, I learned to pull myself in to the point that I had to like calm myself, like talk myself down. Like, okay, Yolanda, it's just nails. If you can't get it done, it's okay. Relax. It's not a big deal. Again, what are you rushing for? Nobody's home. If you need to get a new set, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But those are things that I experienced. Um, I also became depressed. Social media paid a part in it sometimes because seeing other people with their children and especially around like prom. my son passed away in, I think, 10th grade. So um, you he was 16. So I think it's like 10th, 11th grade. I can't remember. I'm sorry. But um. You know, when I would see people going on their proms and graduation and, you know, just hanging out with their children. I have two other children that I'm really proud of. I have a son, Ronald, who's 35, and a daughter, Nayel, who's 33. The crew would be 26 tomorrow. Wow. Oh. So I'm just saying to y'all, I'm grateful to be here tonight because I'm in my feelings. I am. I am. But but to God be the glory because I made it 10 years when I didn't think I would make it 10 minutes. So here we are. Um, his death date is next month. So this is a season for me. But the season don't stop the assignment. Amen. I'm oh, still like on that. assignment. So that's good right there. The season doesn't stop the assignment. If anybody's on tonight, type that in your chat. The season. That's good, Yolanda. 
It the don't season stop the assignment. Doesn't stop the assignment. Let's let's expound on that. Um, so somebody's watching tonight and you're going through, right? Right. And the fact that we go through a lot of times, of course, we like you said, we get in our feelings because we're human. Absolutely. And we 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 gotta go through we gotta go through the emotional state to get through, right? You said that yeah. in my previous podcast. Um, but then when we think about what God you just said, how God kept you, when you thought you couldn't make it 10 minutes, it's been 10 years. Glory be to God. Yes. I can I, I it's been you. almost 10 years, and I'm only just a little bit off. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I thought I would be. I wouldn't, I didn't think I would make it, but by the grace of God that I'm here, that I'm in my right mind, that I'm not everything I thought I would be, because I thought I would be a lot of things, but God said otherwise, but um, I know you wanted to expand on what, what, so I'm going to be honest, what kept me is I had to hang on every word, every comma, every paragraph, every sentence that God said. I had to hang on God's promises. And I had to be, here's my word, guys. My, I had to be intentional about my healing. That's good. We have to be intentional about our healing because, you know, we say, oh, we, you know, I'm praying for you. Or, I'm going to pray about it. That's We have to do that. So we don't want to take anything because everything is birthed in prayer right however when we pray about it we have we have work to do too because it's just not you know god ain't gonna just be- throw a beam out the sky and it's called healing and that's it right we have work to do and we have to be intentional so for me i had to learn what made me happy what made what things shift my mood I get a pleasure out of helping other people. That's why Grief Speaks is real. We planted plants the other day, which was beautiful. We wrote inside the pot what we were burying with grief. We wrote outside what we want to see grow, and we planted seed. And now we're watching them grow. Here's mine. I got my I got my grief sweet plant right here. <laughs> and, right? So you know, but I had to be intentional about what I wanted to see. So you know what I did today? I've been in the house all day. I got up and I cleaned out some shoes, some clothes. I saw a sister of mine, a, a minister who needed clothes and shoes for someone who had lost everything. And I sent four bags of clothes, some uh, two bags of clothes and two bags of shoes to somebody else. That made me feel good in what I'm going going through i'm able to bless somebody else because god has blessed him blessed me abundantly yes. probably too, too much <laughs> right so why not and you know i'm gonna be honest the enemy try to talk me out of i'm like i'm tired i'm this i got all this work to do yada this yada that but to god be the glory this young lady will now have some things that she can look through to see if she you know can be blessed with but that's what helps me helping other people, being here on this podcast and telling you guys how to cope with grief. Okay, so we talked about we talked about journaling. We talked about deep breathing. We even talk about finding joy in the things that you like. Don't expect other people to like them. Worry about what you like. You like the color? Color. I went roller skating when my son first died. You know, I did a lot of things to just find what I really like, to be honest. Exercise is great, and it doesn't have to be long. I take a walk outside of my house. I live in Philadelphia in the city. I'm just, I just throw on some sneakers and some tights, and I go down my steps, and I go out the door, and I just walk around the block, right? 10 to 15, it's about a 12-minute walk, going a long way, like a long block, but if I got to get dressed, go there and do all that, I ain't going most of the time. So right. I learned, girl, just put your shoes on and just go out the door. Don't stop thinking about it and do it. But when we exercise, it lets off what they call happy hormones, serotonin, um, you know, 
so many um, hormones that we need. Hormones, you know, when we laugh, right. it releases hormones, right? All it, you know, when we laugh, when we walk, when we exercise, when we move our bodies, you know, it's so many things that we can do. You know, last month we did painting. Some of you might like poetry. Write some poetry and then get with some people who like poetry. Go right. see somebody and listen to somebody else or enter a contest yourself. You know, if you if that's what something that you like to do. Yoga is also good because it teaches you how to center yourself, how to how to stretch your body. Right. Because here's the thing. Check this out. When you're depressed, what do we do? We end up in the dark. Right. We don't want light. We, we end up in the dark. And most times we're in the fetal position or some crunched up position. Think about it. When you cry, if you lay down, you usually in a fetal position or your arms is up or your body is tense, right? And so sometimes in yoga, they teach you how to stretch, just stretch it out. Mm -hmm. Another um, technique that I use is what we call, um, we release, right? So tension release. So you can take your hands, you the ball your fists up, you can feel your nails in your skin. Mm -hmm. You ever find yourself when you're tense and your shoulders is up? And you realize it and you let them down. Mm -hmm. And when you, you let them down, your whole body just does this sigh, like, whew, right? So you can also squeeze your hands and feet and take the time to notice them being released. Release them. You feel, you can feel every muscle until you begin to feel the circulation come back. That's all also a way of releasing tension. You ever notice when you really get mad, you ball your fists up? But when you begin to um, de-escalate, you'll find yourself opening your hand. But you don't pay attention to it. You just do it. So the concept is pay attention to it. Right? Right. It, yeah, okay. Yeah. So you, 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 you know, and if you want here, try it. Put your hands together and just why don't we just let them go? Just open them. And you can feel the blood begin to circulate back through your hand and through your arm. Um, another one is a grounding technique that works really, really well. So this is good for shifting your mind. You have negative thoughts in your mind. You're, you're getting anxious because you're thinking about things and it's beginning to overwhelm you. It's called grounding using your senses, your five senses. And what you do is, okay, you have this negative thought. You bring yourself present by saying, what's five things do I see? I see the door. I see the computer. I see Jackie. I see what's four things that you can hear. What's three things that you could touch? What's two things you could taste? You know, you use your senses. But what it does is if you practice it, you can't think about the thing that you was thinking about and think about the present at the same time. So Good. it helps you get rid of the thought of whatever it is that you're trying to shift. And, and it's important that you know how to shift because we all get negative thoughts sometimes. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what denomination. Any, the fact that you're human means that you're going to have some negative thoughts sometimes. Right. But knowing, learning how to shift those thoughts and shift your mindset is half of the battle. Because we all know that everything starts in the mind. And you know what? The Lord gave me this epiphany. I got to get this to y'all real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know how we say we think. You ever say to somebody, you think something and then you just say it out your mouth. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit showed me something. You think, think it in your mind. Right. But it depends how it hits your heart, how it comes out your mouth. Mm, everything is filtered through that heart, huh? Listen, because if, if, if you have a negative thought, if you have a thought, just say you got a thought and it hits your heart angry. Then most time it's going to come out your mouth angry. Right. 
if you have a thought in your mind and 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 it hits your heart offended, you can respond. You have you have you might take the opportunity to respond offended. It's how you receive it, how you respond most times. Right. Until you learn how to regulate your emotions. Right? So those are all, are a few. And then it could be about, you know, hobbies you may have. Also, things you want to do to honor the person you lost. Like, I journaled the whole time my son's journey, which was six years. But he knew that I wanted to write a book. So I had, so my thing was to finish this book. And it really, it's it literally took 12 years though. I didn't realize because I wrote it. It took six years to write it because it was through his journey. And then it took me six years to publish it. Right. So it wasn't an overnight thing. Cause guess what? I would write some, then my emotions would get in the way. I had to put it down, pick it up, start again until eventually I gave it an end date and I had to get it out, you know? So everything is not instantaneous. And so I don't want to promise you either that everything is going to be an instant, instantaneous change. Again, as I said earlier, it's about repetition. It's about being intentional to keep doing it so that you can feel the release. Some people purchase pets. That's why animals, they call support pets. Yes. You know, some people, you know, and if you can't afford pets, I know people that just go to the pet store and hang out because they can't have pets or they can't afford pets or whatever their choice is, but they like pets, so they go to the pet store. Now, to somebody else, it's like, child, you hanging out in the pet store? But guess what? If That's that makes you feel better, why not? Why not? Exactly. Why not? So I challenge everyone tonight, and we'll go over some more, but I challenge you to think of the things that help you self-soothe because you can't always depend on everybody else to soothe you because no, right. nobody feels it like you. They want to be there. They want to be supportive, but again, most things happen just like every other pain, toothache, stomach ache, headache. They they show up in in the middle of the night. Or when you lay down at night, or when ain't nobody around. So you have to have something to help regulate yourself and sustain yourself until you can get the help you need. Because sometimes you need crisis. Sometimes you got to go to the crisis center. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because here's the, sometimes you need counseling. Yes, I'm a therapist and I'm all for counseling. But the thing about it is we sometimes do it backwards. We take on all of this hurt and pain and children and all these things we're trying to do, but we won't go to therapy. And then we wait till we fall apart to go to therapy. Yeah. Let's be. And what I'll be. Just, I just want to finish that statement, Jay. Just be, let's be proactive more than reactive. That's what, yep, that's what I was, and that's what I was just about to, it's funny you said that because so many times working in the field and seeing people, you know, in that profession and, you know, I'm not, not judging anyone or any race or anything, but you know, when I was working in the field so many times, you've always seen different nationalities and they stayed, they were, you know, they was um, con con consistent in trying to de develop this path and getting knowledge and getting information. They were very consistent. If they had an appointment to meet with their psychotherapist or whoever it was, they were there, right? To the meet with their grief specialist. And I would always watch. I was pretty young in the profession, but I watched that. And I was like, wow, why don't I see our people, you know, reaching out more? But what I recognize and what I would see is that we keep trying to just keep on, you know. Because we, we're trying to do it ourselves because of the stigma of being strong. Yes. You that's definitely a stigma. That's definitely something that, 
we've adopted not just in grief, well, I guess grief, because when you get a divorce, when you, you know, we just keep trying to, uh, uh, even examples like when I moved here, I was not by myself, but it got to a point, and I thank God that I was able to understand I need help. I had family, a couple family members, they was like, well, let us help you, you know, go on a vacation with your husband. You know, the kids will be fine. We, we're family. And I had to release what I thought that I could control and all of that. Of course, making sure the environments was right for the kids. But I Absolutely. had to recognize in my life that I needed help. And are you right? That is definitely an issue that, like I said, in that profession, when I was working in the profession, I've seen so many different people and they were consistent in finding their answers and solutions. They didn't discount the doctors. They didn't discount the therapists. You know, they were very consistent. And um, yeah, I just pray that we would start to really recognize that even if you feel strong, you know, even if you feel like, oh, right now I'm getting along with this, I'm feeling fine, still talk. So to someone, like you said, with journal, do those things that's going to help you get a pattern so you can like reprogram yourself during this time and this crisis. It's restoration. It really is restoration. We need to understand that everything needs to be revived at some point. It doesn't mean that it died. It just means that it needs a, a, a it just needs a little umph, right? And the thing about therapy is that I tell my clients all the time please if nothing bad happened all week don't come in here looking for something come tell me what was good that happened because you don't have to just go to therapy when things are wrong right. a therapist is there to hear you to hear you out to be a, a a mutual ground to teach you it's not just to hear your problems and it's some we have been so conditioned i have clients that come in and you be like how was your week it was great so what's up well nothing bad really happened and they go silent on me and I'm like, okay, well, tell me what what was so great about it. You know, tell me that. I'm just as interested in that as I am when you have struggles. Right. Right? But we are so, you know, we have to be strong. I'm going to be honest with you. Real talk. The strongest person I know is the person that will seek help. Yes, that's what I do. I, I, I admire. That's what. It, and that was one of the things I admired. And I thought I always would think about, wow, there may be a time in my life or a situation when I'm going to need to do exactly what I'm seeing others do. But I admired that because they weren't, you know, they would come in my office and talk to me and we would have a good time. And they would be like, oh, everything is wonderful. I'm here to just get my thoughts out, do my follow-up, make sure I'm on the right path. You know, we would have a good time. And then some weeks I would see people come in and they'd be like, oh, it was horrible. You know, I'm dealing with this out of the blue. I had a thought, I couldn't sleep, you know, but I I paid attention during those times, meeting different people and getting to know them. And I was just like, wow, you know, and so it really helped me in my own life when different things happen. Like I always talk about just having counseling with my own family, you know, yes. with my husband. We wasn't like at each other's throat, but we needed to think through things because the two shall become one. And so you got to learn now to adjust, to hear, to understand everybody got a different personality type. We and we have to take different. care of our mental. We, 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 so here's, here's how I say, I said this to my um, support group the other night. I said, we don't want to take care of our mental. We go, we go get a physical when ain't nothing wrong. We know ain't nothing wrong, but we get in the physical, we just going to get that checkup. But we don't know what, when we hurt, when we're hurting, when you stomp your foot or twist your ankle or whatever, you go seek help. You go to the emergency room. When you in pain from grief, you need an emergency room. You need some somebody to talk to and guess what i told my group the other night you pay for it in your insurance i know that's right it's just about we, free. guess what you pay for it turn your insurance card on the back it says behavioral health yeah you'll pay that copay when when you twist your ankle so why why don't you pay that copay when you find yourself where you can't get out the bed and take a shower or when you can't get your thoughts straight or when you stop eating 
all of those things need attention. Right. And sometimes you'll go in for one thing and identify the counselor. I know you get it all the time, Yolanda. Somebody will come in for one thing and you identify a whole nother thing and you'll be able to help them pivot from that one situation and how they can now learn from it and help themselves and say, you know, you think it's one thing, but actually it's something else that we're going to work and look at. And then that brings a whole nother part of the, you know, light to their life. And then now they take off. You know, but that's why I like to hear the good stuff, too, because I learn stuff in the good stuff, too. I get to learn who you are when you are not stressed, what you like, what you don't like, what triggered you when you was happy to now become something else. And I get to learn how to support you for you. I have I have clients from five to 70. and. Each one of them, I have to treat differently. Yeah, because I want to talk that. I want to ask you about that tonight. Yeah, nobody is the same. I I have one young man who has anxiety, and he was really anxious when he came to me, but we've been working through it. But we come up with a plan, right? Right. And so, but sometimes if you talk about it too much, he begins to get anxious. So we use half of the session to talk through the plan of the thing that may be making them anxious. And then the second half, me and him play games. So he likes games. So I kicked this butt on Connect 4 the other day and then <laughs> we play Uno, you know, but we're still having third because he's still talking to me. He don't even realize it. He's telling me everything I need to know. We playing the game. So it's not really all about me just sitting there like, okay, and what happened? And what did you do? And what did you say? You got to know how to work with them, right? And to and to be, I tell all my kids, like, I'm a good, good auntie. Don't worry about me. You're never in trouble in here. I'm never going to fuss at you. So don't let your parents tell you. I'm going to tell your therapist because that means nothing to me. You're not in trouble. Because we do those things and then we wonder why they won't talk. Right. You know, so I have my own time with them, but each person is so different. We're all unique. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody is the same. So I have to treat them as such. And just for GP, I'm going to let you ask your question, Jackie, but I have a therapist myself. Right. That's good. Because I have to take all of the stuff. I have 30 uh, some of my clients in one place. And some other clients in another place. And then I have my own life and my own stuff. So I got stuff coming at me all day. And then I got my own stuff to deal with. I got to let it out somewhere. Right. So That's I got good. me a therapist so I can go so I can go fire it off on her. Right. <laughs> oh him. Right. And see, <laughs> that's good because I feel like in life period, it's good to have someone who you can get your thoughts out to and some people like to call it like a mentor or a coach or whatever but personally I, I really like to uh, talk to people who who are counselors per se you know mm -hmm. because, because the way I, I may interpret something or I say if I'm doing several things just say I'm doing all these different things in my life and at some point, I just feel like I personally still need direction on, you know, I can I can strategize and say this is most important, you know, this is next, this is next. But at some point, you still need to have someone who can hear you out and be like, you know, you're on the right path. You know, everything you're doing, you you, you got it. Or, you know, you're doing a lot. You really need to think about you know, and I've always now, since we've been the counseling years ago, always put my family as a priority, always did. But with more things coming on board, I had to always remember to make sure my family was a priority, you know, and, and have balance. But I wanted to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. In your time of, you know, seeing and counseling and helping other individuals, have you noticed a difference with women grieving versus men? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let me just 
preface by more people are coming to counseling in today's world than ever before. Let's start there. Everywhere you call has a wait list at this point. However, um, women are so women are nurturers, but they are not so uh, rejecting of receiving help or guidance or even just asking if they don't know, right? But men, because they've been taught to internalize, they're not so easy because there is, it's even harder for them to be vulnerable because of pride mm-hmm. and because of mm-hmm. ego. So prime example is um, I had a young man come to me, come to my office the other day for intake and he had lost his mother mm-hmm. and he was very, very depressed, but he's depressed and he's angry with siblings and people and things like that. So you could see that he, you could just look at him and tell that he wanted to cry, right? But of course, he's not going to bust out crying in front of me because I'm a woman. Right. So I looked at him and I said, look at me. and he looked at me and I said, guess what? You're a human being. Did you know that? Did you know that you want to find a robot? And he looked at me. I said, listen, you are entitled to cry if you want to. Just on the grounds that you're human. Right. Not because of your gender. So he looked at me, but sometimes I find with men also, they need, they feel they need permission because it's not the thing they do. Like women usually are just cry. Like they, you know, they don't even try to hold it back or they try, but eventually they give into the feeling. But with men, they usually don't because they, they've been taught that that's being vulnerable. And I deal with that a lot with my my little kids because when I when I'm counseling little kids, I'm really counseling their parents. Right? right? right. It's really more parenting skills. And I say to my parents, because you know, come on, we grew up with, you know, stop that crying. You a big boy. You ain't got no business crying. You a boy. Boys don't cry. On your big boy pants, you know, all of that kind. You ain't no sucker, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then we wonder why when when our men grow older, they fold. Because that's what they've been taught from babies. What you teach a child from a small, it just follows them as they grow. So when life starts whooping their butt, all they can hear is mom or dad, you know, saying, you ain't no punk. Mm-hmm. You don't be crying. You take that on the chin. You don't cry in front of nobody. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And we don't realize that we the ones who started it. We the ones who did it. Right. And then when they have nervous breakdowns and stuff like that, most times men result men result result to anger anger and violence that's what's wrong in our streets Jay. that's what's wrong people don't know what to do with the emotions that they have right and they and they and they've been conditioned to think i can't let nobody know that i'm struggling in my mind I can't let nobody know that I just want to cry all day. So what do I do? I keep on playing this thing until it makes me angry enough. And then I go and I hurt somebody or I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. Because I don't feel like I have an outlet. Let me tell you something was really, um, really touching. It happened to me. So my son passed away. Our son passed away. And um, my husband it said earlier on, right before my son passed, Yolanda, I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with this. But, you know, we as wives, our husbands, you know, who have those husbands who protect us and really hold their own, you know, walk around like ain't nothing wrong. You just take it for that. 
Mm -hmm. So I remember um, just going through marriage, you know, after losing a child, you know, very emotional. He's very distant and, you know, whatever the case is. So we go through that. And I remember one night he said to me, Yolanda, I was crying. So he was like, what's wrong? So I said, I just miss Quill. And he said, well, I miss him too. You think I don't miss him? But that's his way, sarcasm. So you think I don't miss him? I said, no, you just asked me what was wrong. So I'm telling you. But I had gotten to a place where I was irritated by his voice. And I remember saying to the Lord, God, what's wrong with me? Because he ain't doing nothing. But the sight of him gets on my nerves. What's wrong with me? Because I knew it was me. Right. And the Lord said to me, Yolanda, you're heartbroken. And you're mm. expecting him to heal it. And he can't. Until you give your heart to me, this is where you'll be. Girl, wow. that thing, let me tell you something. That's that thing good. sent me, that thing sent me on my knees to my husband, begging for forgiveness. Wow. Because I was so caught up in my son, my son, my feelings. You don't talk to me. You don't touch me. You don't kiss me. Me, 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 me. If I can be honest, I probably didn't, I didn't consider how much he was certain because that was his son too right so I went back to him and I said I'm you know I'm sorry for being so selfish you know just being self-centered da 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 and you know what he said to me girl it broke my heart he said Yolanda I forgive you he said but I told you that I didn't know if I could handle this mm -hmm. he said and you know what I was there for everybody but there was nobody there for me Wow. Wow. And somebody tonight is watching or somebody is going to watch or their wife is watching or the husband is watching. And that's maybe how they feel. Like you just said, nobody was there for everybody else, but nobody's there for them. And it's so good that you both was able to be authentic and have that conversation because I always feel like one of the major things in life is just, just to be authentic. Just be authentic. to say what it is. Right? Because at the end of the day, what else, what more can, you can't be any more than what you can be. Like, you are who you are. But and you and you know what? had that conversation. The fact that you was able to go to him and, and ask for forgiveness. See how the healing came? He was able to now get out an emotion or a thought that was in his head because he probably was looking like, who's here for me? Where, where, you know? But by the grace of God, though, that the Holy Spirit pointed it out to me and that I beckoned when he knocked because I didn't see it. I was being my authentic self, selfish. So that's not right there. That's good because you just, you pointed out, but for the grace of God and Holy Spirit. And so we don't do the podcast just to come on. God knows I don't because I will be on here every week faithfully at a certain time. I can't do that. I have not been given permission to do that by God. I got to be led by the spirit of God, right? And the fact that you just said that, Someone tonight may be struggling. Someone want to look at the replay. And you may be trying to figure this thing out. You may be going through a crisis, grief. It could be years that you haven't identified, you know, what your heart, what your mind. It could be days. It could be months. But when we ask Holy Spirit, as I'm a big stickler on everything I do, everything I, I need, I got to go to Holy Spirit because without it, um, I have no direction, literally. I already made, we, we already know, we made shipwrecks of our own lives. That's why we believe in God and God has been good and he's continually to watch over us. But someone is going to watch this. And so I want to encourage you tonight as we continue, if you don't know 
the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to get you, I want you to get to know him because, and then ask for his spirit to come upon you, to live and dwell in you, to let it guide you so that you can have an understanding, you can have an insight, like Yolanda said, when she didn't know what was wrong with her and she was like, what's wrong with me? God heard her. Even in that time of desperation, in a season that was dark, in a place where she couldn't navigate and couldn't make sense. But 10 years later, she's still standing by the grace of God. And somebody needs to know that you can still keep standing. Why? Because she is a living witness and she's here in rare form letting you know it can be done. And, and, and not to abort the season and the assignment on her life because out of that, look what God has done. But she had to consult the Holy Spirit that he would lead and guide her. And out of that, so much healing takes place. And then we got to be willing to be able to apologize. We got to be willing to be able to forgive. You know, I I don't know your story. I, I can't relate. I'm not going to say it like I can, Yolanda. However, I believe if I, I live long enough, I'll go through a season that will be, we go through these seasons. I've had dark seasons in the past, right? I've had wonderful seasons, and but I've had some dark, I mean, seasons where if only people knew what I've been through, I probably should be on site meds to this day, right? Nothing like me hurting myself, but just the situations that life, and we make these wrong decisions and all, but God, by his grace and his mercy, he's so faithful. I thank God I don't look like what I've been through. But at the end of the day, to this day, I still, I'm like, Holy Spirit, show me, help me, cover me, because I don't know what today is going to bring. I don't know what the next minute is going to bring. We don't know. But I'm always like, give me the grace, whatever may come my way, because I know things will come. But I'm constantly praying it. I'm always trying to ask God, so when something may come and it's overwhelming, his grace will come in and, and help me because at the end of that's all I have. I have I have God. I mean, he's everything. It's not all I have. He's everything. <laughs> he is everything. But as he said, Jesus said, I go away, but I leave you a comforter. And that's why I, that's all I always pray, Lord, comfort when people pass away, my my comment may sound generic, but I mean it. It's always, I pray God's comfort because nobody can comfort you like him. Not only will he comfort you, but he helps you through some things. And like you said, you know, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you because, you know, we all have all kinds of things going through our minds and situations at hand and, you know, lack and discomfort and pain. But God has a, the Holy Spirit has a way of showing you that thing to make it make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. He has a way. He has a way of making it make sense. And, you know, for those of you who may be in that season of loss right now, ask the Lord to show you which, which way to go, what to do, who to talk to, who to, who's going to be your help. You know, because the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of everything, every decision that we make. And guess what? Let's keep it all the way real. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna always get it right. Right. Exactly. We ain't gonna always get it right, and we ain't gonna always listen because we hard headed, right? <laughs> but just to know that you have that comforter that you can go to, that you can go to, and that can show you things like you know, in my season. The Lord showed me a lot of stuff that I didn't realize. But if I would have stayed stuck in my feelings, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. My marriage wouldn't have made it. We just celebrated 25 years. Um, we wouldn't have made it. Thank you. And, and statistics sure show when you lose a child, most marriages don't make it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thank God it's not by anything that I've done with myself and self because I had a whole lot of stuff that I would have did different but by the, the grace of God you know even when I was there I don't know if you remember this Jack but when I was at Beloved um, when I used to fellowship at Beloved 
when that was my home church. And, um, you know, during that time and people would be like, you know, oh, you know, how are you doing? And I used to always say, but by the grace of God, I'm not in the crack house. Yeah. And people would, but like, that was the joke. People thought I was joking. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that I would, and I would tell them, I'm not playing. Right. I'm serious. I've never smoked crack a day in my life. No disrespect to anybody who has. However, there was days in my life, and during that time especially, that if I thought that crack would keep me or numb me, where I didn't have to feel the pain that I feel for losing my son, if it was was not for the Lord who is on my side, I can tell you right now, I wouldn't be here. I ain't even want to say I wouldn't know where I would be. I wouldn't be here. That's for sure. Because some days the pain, I want to say to anybody, some days the pain seems to be unbearable. And I want you to know I have those days. Yeah, I have a nonprofit and I support grievers, but I have my time. I have my time of question. Lord, why my son? Why not my son? And you know what? I take hold. I take heart. And the Bible says we we come. God has already. He knows us before we were in our mother's womb. Right. Our lives was already written. So here's the thing. My boy, my boy, right back there bro, over my shoulder, um, his life was only written for 16 years. It wasn't a mistake. Right. That's good, Yolanda, because and he okay. wasn't he didn't die from cancer. Cancer was a contributor, but he was set free from cancer. Don't right. play with that. Right. Because you can't leave here until God says so. Right. That's that's it. And that's powerful. And that's what someone needs to know tonight. Because, um, but see, you allow God to, to recalibrate what you say, restore, recenter your mind, right? And then that comes with wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And he was like, wow. He made, you know, the word of God says, a light into my path, a lamp into my feet, a light into my path. And you kept trusting God and you kept asking God and even when you didn't know how to make it how what what all of that meant and then you understood the end it was already written right the the end was already written and even sometimes in our lives even not if it's not just saying if it's grief but anything that goes on in our lives sometimes we we can question it because grief can come in the form of losing a lot of things, right? Your house, you lose all your possessions, you lose your whole entire family. Some people have lost their whole entire family. You know, some of those people um, in Mississippi, you know, um, just recently, um, some people lose a career or a job that they went to school for 18 years to lose your medical license. And now, you know, you're, you're, you're depressed. You, you're grieving because it's a loss. And you just said something how the end was already written. And even for myself, I remember when one of my kids, with my, with my son, I was questioning some things like, why did he go out and do this? He's too young to do that. But I had to recognize, I don't know how long his life is. I don't know. You know, I don't know. He's young to me, but only God knows, right? So who am I to 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 have this standard for him? I've done what I was supposed to do with, you know, like you have your children and then they live their lives. But when you think of being, having the end in mind, it helps us in so many areas. Mm -hmm. It helps us in so many areas that this is how it had to happen. I was just telling my daughter the other night when we was talking on the phone and I was telling her and I was like, I didn't understand some of the things I went through in my youth when I was young, but, but it was preparing me. For now, yeah, yes, absolutely, yes. Right. God set you later. all the way up, don't he? Right. <laughs> and so sometimes I had to. Now I thank God. That's why the Lord says, "Give thanks in all things." I thank Him for that word, not for 
not for all things, but give thanks in all things because I now look back and I'm like, that had to happen for where God was taking me in my life. So I don't, yeah. I don't look at it as a bad thing. You know, sometimes I put up little signs, reject, rejection means redirection. You know, it's not personal, but when somebody deals with that or if people deal with different situations, you have to remember that it's a plan. It's not always it's bad. It feel bad, but when you look at it from the eyes and the lens of what God is doing, it is good. One of those phrases I use all the time that keeps me is God already knew. God already knew. So when stuff go crazy for me, I'd be like, all right, well, God already knows. So he know how we're going to come out of this because he knew this was going to happen today. He already knew. And I like Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And when you really think about that, when you really, really think, when I really think about that, his plan is to prosper us in so many different ways. I mean, in all ways, really. But I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Not your exactly. plan, but my plan, as he said. But here's another thing that goes with what you said. You said, I didn't understand my things I went through in my youth, but they were. But now I realize they were for things now. And the word that goes with that is because all things work together. All things. Amen. For good, for those who are called according to his purpose. So all things. He ain't say just when you're an adult or just when you're a child. All things. Oh, you know, man. I look back over my life, Jackie, and I'm telling you, I've been walking and encouraging people through grief for many years and didn't know it. But when I started the, I did a um, live that I used to do every week before I um, birthed Grief Speaks. It was called Good Grief Conversation. And I would see people People signing on to hear that live, that Facebook live, and it would be people that I'd encouraged years ago that mm-hmm. had lost loved ones or lost things in their lives. I didn't know. I thought I was just encouraging. I didn't know it was a specialty to it, but God knew. And now, like I said, now it's an assignment. And you know what? Sometimes Everybody don't understand your assignment and not even to chump those people, because sometimes you don't understand your assignment. (laughs) Right. Right. And I can be honest, like I didn't understand the depth of my assignment and I didn't make, you know, I always want to preface. I don't always make the right decisions and whatever the case may be. But once God gave me the confidence and the assurance of what he called me to do. Now, I fight every devil in hell because I know what my assignment is. But I had to get to. But I had to get to that place. I knew God I was telling me to do something. I was doing some. I was doing it. I didn't always do it. Maybe the right way or the way that people expected me to, or the way that people thought it should have gone, you know, or maybe I should have made a different, a different um, choice in it. But at the end of the day, the assignment has been given to me to do. And the way I know is because God continues to bless it. Amen. Amen. He continues to bless it. He continues to send people. He continues to bless Grief Speaks ministry on a whole. And he continues to to network us with other people and people bless our ministry. And, you know, it's just, our God is so good. Just a little plug. I got a new book coming out and I'm excited about that as well. Um, um, It is a collaboration, but it's called He Guided Me Through the Storm. And I'm so excited about this piece because, you know, I wrote a book about my son's journey. Then I wrote wrote a grief journal to help other people. Now I get to tell my what God has done for me. So I get to tell 
my story. So I'm excited about oh, this. Hi, I'm excited. God. About it. So yes. God is That's God good. is doing some things. Grief speaks is growing. Um, we're going to bless some people for Mother's Day and Father's Day, and so we're just really grateful to God to be in this position. Um, you know, continue to pray for us because you know the enemy is mad, but you know I I ain't worried about him. <laughs> I ain't worried about him. But you know, it can be it can be scary sometimes, it can be discouraging sometimes. But at the end of the day, the Lord said, I don't care if nobody don't show up, you show up. Man, that's right. But guess what? He gave it. He's so good that it hasn't been one time that ain't nobody show up. (laughs) So we grateful. He didn't leave me out there to talk by myself. So I thank God for that. I I I um Thank God for you. I thank God for the ministry God has given you and your obedience. Your obedience. Because as a result of that, um, we got to remember that everything we go through um, is not just for us. It's so many people. When we really look at it, so many people get blessed as a result. And we know Jesus had to bear his own cross. And we all will have a cross to bear. Right? But out of that, so can I just say one thing, Jackie? I'm sorry, but I just cannot leave this out. And don't find it strange because even in my assignment, y'all, I grieve, I'm grieving in my assignment and not the loss of my son. I've lost some other people, places, and things in this assignment. But what I say. It's a season. And it's a season. But, season. but it don't you know what I stop the assignment. Yep. I was when I was talking with my daughter the other night, it was funny because we was talking and I was like, when God takes you places, it's lonely. Ooh. Right? It's not the people you think, the ones you think is not what you think. Because that's not what God is thinking. Guys, look. The same ones that said Hosanna, Hosanna said crucify him, crucify him. Yeah. How about that? And that's why I was saying when you go when you when you go through things and you recognize, okay, I'll be transparent tonight. Going through life and really being like, like an only child. I am an only child. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how I kind of feel growing up. Like, I was always the only child. But sometimes people be like, oh, you know, your sibling and this and that. I'm like, well, I don't really feel like I lost anything or had it because I really never had it. But now that I'm older and the things that God is showing me and the, the things that I have to do, and I had to always, it was like he always set me apart. It was like I was always put to the side for a specific pur- purpose. But when I wasn't looking through it from my spiritual eyes, I was looking at it from my natural eyes. But now that I see out of my spiritual eyes, I'm like, oh, so you got, for everything you got to do in my life, you constantly, now when he when he called me to serve, you know, I'm a minister at my place of worship. That's where I serve, right? I thank God for that. That's where I learn. That's where I, my, my pastor gave me prophetic word, my co-pastor. I'm learning. I will always be a, a student, you right? But when he now, thank God I have the pastor I have because he's always like, go out. You know, what is God telling you to do? What ministry is God giving you? I want y'all to be going forth, be proactive. God has something for each person. And that's a blessing, right? But I say that to say that even when you're walking out this other part, you get people of oh God hear me tonight. You want to be mindful that you're going to go through the season of loneliness and you may be in that season according to what God is trying to do and, and accomplish in your life. Because if you get attached to people, places and things, you won't go to your full potential. My God, where God is trying to take you and what he's wanting to do through you, because he got to he got to be your all in all. He got to be the author and the finisher of our faith. And when he truly has that place in our hearts, in our minds, there's not, oh my gosh, he show up and he show out. He do so great and mighty things. He knows that you have a humble heart. 
He know that you recognize, like you said tonight, Yolanda, it's by the grace of God, right? And God shows you all of those things, but he gives you a confidence in him. And like you said, I just need to speak to that lonely place because, you know, we say that so easily, especially in a church, you know, everybody can't go. But that's real, right? Everybody can't go and everybody's not meant to go. And not only are they not meant to go, but I can use myself. I, 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 and some of the people in the places that I've lost through this journey, it hurt and it may hurt for all of us, not just me, but, but what I realized is that it had to be that way because I am such a people person right. that the people distracted me. Right. From what I needed to do. So God had to take me away from everybody. Although I thought people walked away from me or I walked away from them or somebody did me wrong or whatever. No, God said, I need you by yourself because the moment I put some people in your in your path, you lose focus. You worried about encouraging them. And I'm telling you to come over and do this. (laughs) Right. You sound like my life. It sound like my story. You're like, no, Girl. Jackie, I ain't tell you to love on all of them. I'm God. You're not. I Stop. It's a season. I'm trying to say. So listen, God told me one night it was so fun because let me just tell you, it was Ayala Van Zant was on TV talking to some people. But I'll never forget this as long as I live. She said to the girl, "Stop." To- Trying to save everybody and save yourself. Well, girl, listen here. You would have thought she was in my living room. Because I lost my whole natural mind because you couldn't tell me she wasn't telling. Save yourself. You can't save yourself. And we out here trying to save the whole world. And it's good, it's good that when we come to that realization, because that lets us know to keep our eyes focused on God and him alone. And it also helps us know what we need to go to him about and lay at his feet. Cause I'm always like, Lord, you know, my heart, you know, this, you know that, but now what I've learned and I, what I'm learning is to enjoy where I am. Enjoy it. Right. Enjoy the people. Like you can, you have your grief speaks, People come out, listen, you loving on them for what it can be at that particular time. When you go home, it's going to be another group or maybe some some that still come, maybe some that drop off. I'm just giving an example. So I'm learning now. Just enjoy the ride, Jackie, because don't get too attached because I'm God. And you know how I've been doing you all your life. Now that your eyes is open, keep them open. Stay close to me. Stay at my feet. Stay humble. That Holy Spirit lead and guide you. Love people. But enjoy the journey. Enjoy it. Because you don't know what tomorrow brings. And everything I do, I want to do. I said, Lord, I just want to do it with joy. I want to lead a scripture. This came to my heart. John 16 and 24. Somebody's going to listen to this or is listening. And you may be saying, you know, I need my joy back. I need direction back. I need my fire back. I I, I need to continue to just be strengthened in it, like you said, in this season, because you know your son's birthday and the anniversary and things like that. And Lord, I just I just need more. He hears us. But somebody may you you may have been saying it, but somebody may have not. John 16, 24 says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. I had to get to Shalanda because there was things I asked in God's name, but then there were some things I didn't ask. Because I just thought, okay, it's going to come as a result. But now I'm learning. It says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Not that the problem will go away. Not that the situation will disappear. No, that your joy may be full. So a lot of days I'm like, joy. I'm like, Lord, let my joy be full. Will this hurt go away? No. Will that situation that happened to me 20 years go away? No. Will the next 10 years that something that come up, will that not bother me? No. But this one thing I have asked, Lord, I'm asking in your name that my joy will be filled. Full. Tra- listen, in transparent moment, real, real, real talk, when I tell you, 
that God just restored my joy. Praise God. Just like real, real recent. Because although I was walking it out and I knew God was doing something in my grief of losing people, connections, um, you know, all kinds of situations, new career, the whole thing. I questioned, I questioned, but I held on with my faith. So I ain't gonna say in question, but my faith sustained me. Pray. Oh, that's powerful. I gotta put that here. Wait a minute. I questioned, but I held on to my faith. And I kept asking. And I kept asking. And I kept asking until God restored me. And when he restored me, he restored me with the confidence that I needed in this season in this assignment to do it to his might and not worry about what people say, what people think, what I think, what they think, nobody. But I just needed somebody to know because, you know, we get these titles, we get these, you know, I got a company and all of this kind of stuff. No, no, no. I know the Lord and I've been loving him a long time and he's been loving me. But I was walking through a season that it was it, I was suspect. It was it's questionable on my end. I'm just being, I, I've always been a real person and I ain't about to be somebody else today. You know, I, it was real questionable. I was, I ain't gonna lie. I got to that point. I was sick of folks, all kinds of folks and just didn't want to be bothered. Stayed by myself, isolated, didn't want to be bothered with nobody doing my own thing. You know, but I kept saying, Lord, my prayer was this, Lord, no matter where I go or where I, how far I try to go, don't take your hand off me. Don't let me get far. Just let this be a phase in my life that I can learn from. Keep your hands on me. Because I ain't going to lie, y'all. I was letting go of my grip. I was. In my pain, I was like, yo, it's whatever. You know what I mean? But don't let me go. You know, as they say, Lord, whatever you doing, don't do it without me. Yeah. Don't yes, I know that's don't right. Do it without me. And I'm so grateful today to say that my my joy has been restored, but it's been restored in confidence in God. It's been restored in confidence in myself. It's been restored in knowing that I know and not what, what I was saying I know or thought that I knew or what somebody else knew, you know. So now I can walk freely in the assignment that God has given me without question, without worry, without anxiety, without judgment. Where I can't say I always could do that, even though I was still walking out the assignment. Amen. You know, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God, you know, and, and you know, I'm, <laughs> for lack of a be better way, I'm on my way back to some things and, and in some places and things like that. But I'm just grateful to God that with the enemy, the traps that the enemy set for me during that time, that, that God intervened. Yes. Yes. He's so faithful. He's, He's so faithful. He would raise up a standard and he did. Because yes. trust me, there was some traps that it was easily could have fell into. But I'm so grateful that I Listen, and that God, God intervened, not me, because if I had my way, I probably would have did it. So, right. so I'm just grateful that, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be on the other, I'm, that I'm on the side of joy. You know, when I was going through in my grief, people would say, how are you? As I began to get better, my answer would be, I'm on the other side of better. And that just meant that I'm better, but I ain't quite there yet. I'm on the other side, though. And so tonight I want to say I'm on the other side of joy, um, you know, joy, unspeakable joy. I, I'm, I'm on the other side. I'm figuring that part out, you know, um, and I'm grateful. Yeah. Like I said, it ain't been easy. It hasn't been easy. And even now, you know, but I, I, I'm i determined, you know, even tomorrow I'm going, you know, make, I made some plans 
you know, to celebrate my son's birthday. But it ain't easy that 25 years ago, 26 years tomorrow, that I gave birth to a person that's not here. And it bring and it's and it brings back those memories of labor and feedings and brushing hair and changing diapers and you know all of those things. And it's not even imaginable that I would be able to live on this earth without someone that I birthed. But God said otherwise, and I'm gonna fill. As I say to people, I'm gonna fill the fields. And I'm going to keep going in my assignment. But I do give myself, one of my coping skills also, is to give myself permission to fill the fields. Right. Because you're human. And you got to continue to let that be free. Let that, you know, come out. And let that just um, be part of that continuous healing process. Right? Because as you've been teaching me (laughs) and everyone here, even on the podcast, we're human and we will go through and we will have those moments. But like you said, we have to let it go, let it out, and then focus again. And that's why I thank God for how you said the assignment, because that's so vital. and It keeps you going on. It keeps you knowing that there's greater. It keeps you knowing that the purpose that God is putting in you and on your life, even through this, it's still helping somebody else live another day, another year, another 10, 20, 30 years. Someone like myself that I don't know what's, I don't know. But all of this now is coming, to, you know, I'm learning and, and and it'll show itself later one day too. Like, okay, that was a, it wasn't just a podcast. It wasn't just an episode. Right. It was a right. purpose behind it because God is very, like you said, he's intentional and we have to be intentional. And so now, like even for myself, everything that I do, everything I get involved in and I learn about, I'm like, okay, God, what is your intentions on this? You know, show me, let me know. But I think, I thank God for you. I thank God for the things that you've told us tonight. Just want you to go over those um, several coping skills. And I want to leave us with some scriptures and pray tonight. And, um, and okay. You know what? Uh, So some of the coping skills, we just want to reiterate again. We have grounding techniques. We have deep breathing. You have yoga. You have meditation. You have the tense um, coping skill. We have journaling. We have, um, you know, sometimes it just takes reading a good book. Sometimes it takes taking a high. It's funny because I I, sometimes I assign my clients to just go home and get in the tub with some bubble bath in a candle like that's important that 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 can rejuvenate a person that's a coping skill you know volunteering helping someone else using some of your talents and your you know your gifts you know you may be crab you may be good at crabs you may be good at crocheting you may be good at you know knitting it all kind of, go outside listen for a little while I was jumping some double dutch you know <laughs> go just do what can soothe yourself that's what's important amen important again you can go to Google, put 90, put coping skills. There's several, but it's one that says 99 coping skills that you can read, listening to music, making your own playlists, um, you know, listening to whatever those things are. But everything, you know, everybody has their own um, interest and in the things that they would soothe with. So um, my biggest encouragement to nine things and write them down to find some things that you can make a um make a consistency out of you do it the more you enjoy to do it the more you'll look to do it the more your body will look to do it and it could help your mindset it can help your body like you can get your mindset right you know when we get our it all starts in the mind when we get our mind right everything else come into alignment so I just want to encourage you. I thank you guys so much for having me tonight. Um, like I said, keep me in prayer. My son's birthday tomorrow. And then we a couple of weeks we'll be into his um, death date. You know, some things. But 
I'm preparing. Like when I get off of here, I'm going to go start my dinner for tomorrow because I'm going out to make sure that my family has dinner and things like that. So, you know, again, we have to be intentional and don't forget that just because you're in the season, the season does not stop the assignment. Amen. The season does not stop the assignment. And I thank God for you on tonight, Yolanda. Um, I pray you come back next month Absolutely. with another topic. And we continue this series, continue talking about the different uh, ways that people can cope and deal. And even if it's um on, you know, we'll have another topic, of course. But I thank God for you. I thank God for your obedience because obedience is better than sacrifice. I want to leave a couple scriptures with everyone that's looking tonight. Before we close, I want to pray for our sister Yolanda. I also want to pray for anyone that's watching or will watch that is dealing with grief or a loss of anything so that you can be strengthened on tonight by the word of God. Listen, God's word is so powerful. And God's word, it doesn't lie. It goes out to accomplish the very thing that it was set to do. But when we appropriate the word of God to our life and to our situations, that is our that is our that is what we fight with. That is a weapon. Our praise, his word and our worship. We have to remember that we have to consistently be in those. Remember those three things, no matter what we go through. The Bible says in Colossians 1 and 11, may you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Um, then when we look at Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, let us run with perseverance, the race that was marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Then when we look at James 1, 2, and 3, chapter 1, verses 2, 2, 3, it says, consider it all joy. My brother, yes, my that's my favorite. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. We thank God for Yolanda tonight because she is persevering through all adversity. Then Psalms 119, 76 says, may your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. We thank God for Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Can any one of you by worrying, the key word is worrying, Add a single hour to your life. I want you to be reminded tonight, people of God, to cast your cares to the Lord because he cares for you. And we will have cares. We will continually to have things that come upon us. But we got to lay it at God's feet. God, you take this from me. God, you help me. God, you deal with this pain. You be my comfort. Like Yolanda said tonight, he is a mighty comforter. He is our great comforter. The Bible in Matthew 11 and 28, it says, come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is a rest that God wants us to uh, go into. And this rest is not just sleeping. This rest is having the fullness of life. This rest is financially being financially stable, that we don't work ourselves to the bones, but that we live a life. Because God intended for the people of God to live life. He said, I come that you have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So... We want to know that there is a rest that he wants us to enter into. Too. And in John 14, 27 says, peace I leave to, to with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, my God. And I want to start right here because tonight someone may be thinking, oh, I have peace if I have my bank account. I'll have peace if I have this home. I'll have peace if I'm married. I'll have peace if, if I have everything. But there's a peace because you're, we will have trials and tribulations. But God has given us a peace. And this peace, it surpasses all understanding. And we don't know how this peace come about. He said, but I give you a peace, not like the world. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid because he give us a peace. We have to ask for the peace. See, the other scripture said earlier, we have not because we ask not. He said, you've done many things, but you have not asked that your joy 
would be full. So sometimes we got to ask God, God, like you said, Yolanda, you had to ask God, what is going on with me? Why I don't even want to hear my husband's voice, right? And then as soon as you ask God, God was able to release to you the insight and the information that you needed for a release to come that your joy, even though it wasn't, maybe not came all at once, he was restoring it little by little, little by little, because the peace and the joy he give us is not of the world. So I want you to be reminded tonight. It says, I have told you these things so that you, that in me, you may have peace because this world, you will have trouble. It is a, we might have trouble. It didn't say it may be a choice that you, it says in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, my God. Hallelujah. Take heart, understand, and be encouraged because God, Jesus, have overcome the world. And so tonight, that's where Yolanda and I hope coming in because we, we believe in God. Our faith is in not in ourselves, not in our money, not in our degrees, like she said, not in, our non, not in a nonprofit, not in a title. Our hope is in Jesus and him alone. Our faith is rooted and grounded in him because he showed us over and over and over and over and over again that he has been proven to be faithful. Because even when we didn't, like you said, God kept you when you may have not wanted to be kept. But it was by the grace of God, he kept me at times in my life, in the darkest time and seasons of my life when I didn't want to be kept. And he still kept me. And when you look back, all you can do sometimes is cry and say, God, I'm still standing. I'm still here. I may not understand why, but you know why. And every That's day, right. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Every day he continues to show us why. He, can, he, he, he gives us that why. He keeps helping us. Look, it says in Philippians, it says, um, Philippians What's this one? Four and six and seven. Chapter four, verse six and seven. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I'm going to stop right there real quick. With thanksgiving. And the reason why I want to start with thanksgiving, because anytime we allow, I was talking about this last podcast with, with my husband, anytime we don't continue to thank God, that's why it says in all things give thanks. Because if we have to give thanks, even when we don't know, even when we don't understand, even when the hurt is un is unbearable, because if we can continue to give thanks, our heart stays open and the light continues to manifest. God's light, which is his word, can continue to manifest in our life. But when we stop thanking God, when we get bitter, when we get angry, when we 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 just you know, why me, this and that. And we will have questions. I'm not saying we don't question, but keep giving thanks because in that thanks, that's why praise is a weapon. That's why praise is a weapon because in that thanks, God keeps hearing our petitions. God keeps making a way out of no way. Even though we don't understand it, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. And then it says, present your request to God. And the peace, listen to this part, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Hallelujah. I get happy about that because it goes above anybody's mindset. When people think you shouldn't make it, you are going to crumble. If you keep giving thanks, That's like Yolanda going right. to give thanks, even on tomorrow when she got to keep pressing, she got to go through another month, another season when she got to keep thanking. God, God, I thank you. I'm going to be thanking God with you, Yolanda. Lord, Amen. I thank you for my sister. I thank you for keeping her feet set firm. I thank you, God, that you're going to keep revealing to her. I thank you, God, for the people you're going to continue to send her away, that she will know that she know that she know that you That's have right. not forgotten her and that all yes. things are not lost. It says, in the peace of God, my God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart in your, in your mind. mind. Oh, God. In Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you tonight, people of God, I feel God's spirit so heavy in this place right now. We are in a time where we got to guard our mind and we got to guard our heart. That's right. Because we don't know what's going to come. 
But this thing we know, that if we keep giving the praise, if we keep thanking God in the midst of the storm, yes, he said, I will give you a peace that transcends all understanding. And I will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My God, You know what's funny you, about Jesus. that? What's so good about that is that oh, notice that, that he didn't say that you have to guard your heart or your mind. He said he would do it. But My you got to let him do it. By doing what? Giving him thanks. Giving him yep. thanks. By keeping your mind on him. He said, you keep your mind on me. I'll give you perfect peace. My God. Listen, God. if it costs you your peace, it costs too much. It, it costs too much. It costs too much. Listen, Perfect. you guard your peace by any means necessary. By any means necessary. Because your peace is everything. By any means necessary. Yes. God said, here God, here God your, guard your heart and your mind. That you can have peace. We can't, we, you know, but sometimes we look everywhere else but to God. But to God. And that's why I love when I had to learn, Yolanda, one part of my life, I had to keep giving God thanks. I remember I used to get my son dressed and I would get go to church. I mean, I at home getting my son dressed and, and, and tears would just be coming down my eyes and I would blast my gospel music because the enemy was coming against me so hard and I didn't understand a whole lot of stuff and I would just be in the bathroom and I would be thanking God and Cordell was a little chunky little boy back there and he'd be like, thank you, Jesus. Look, and, two and he'd be like, thank you, Jesus. I'll be in there like, thank you, God. And I'll be like, yeah, Cordell, clap your hands. He'd be clapping with me. And tears used to come. I mean, I used to just cry. But I was still giving God thanks. And I used to make it to the house of God plenty of days. And even in those tears, I remember I said, God, one day you're going to give me joy. You're going to give me, you're going to restore back what the enemy thought he, he stole. You're going to give me, you're going to give me. A hundred for I just declare it in my car. Coming to beloved. I'm gonna have more than enough. I'm gonna be blessed again. I'm, yes. I'm, I didn't even understand what I was saying at the time. All I knew was I was going through a season where the tears didn't stop. But guess what didn't stop? My thanks. I kept praising God. And I kept praying. I had to play praise music in my house. And I'm somebody's watching tonight. You're gonna have to up the ante. You're gonna have to know that you gotta go in on another level. You're going to have to, some, listen, even now sometimes on a Sunday or Saturday, my daughter will tell you, I, I don't have nothing but praise break music. I be in my bathroom, my, bed, my bedroom, I put my ball speaker on, and there ain't nothing but praise break music. And I'll shout in the shower. I come out, I be in the bathroom shower. I go in the bedroom, I go in the loft. Look, I come in and make coffee. I be blasting. I just want a praise break. And I need a praise break. That may be a two-hour praise break that I need to play. But I play it because I just need praise because it's a weapon. And sometimes I'm not going through, but I feel some stuff in the atmosphere to those that I'm connected with. So when God starts to show me your, this person's face, that person's face, I'm praising them for the breakthrough. I'm praising them because I know what God know that's right. I'm praising I know that's them for right. deliverance. I'm praising them for somebody about to get married, somebody's husband. I'm praising them because somebody's been praying and sowing and they finances and God is about to show them great and mighty things as a as a way of their <laughs> obedience. So I'll be praising God continuously. And it's not just for myself. First Thessalonians 5 and 16 through 18 says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and yes. Jesus for and you. Jesus is for you. For you and I. This is the will of God that we pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all things and rejoice always. Rejoice always. My God, I just need you tonight, Lord, to let that word get in our hearts and our minds. Let yes, it get in our mind and our hearts, God that we will not sin against your word, God, that we will remember this in a time of trouble, that we will remember it, God, that we will remember to give thanks in all things, that we will rejoice, God, and that we will continue to pray without ceasing, that we will continue, God, to speak to you, to talk to you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will hear us and that your will will be done in our life, for this is what you've said in your word. We thank God for his word. 
on tonight that he says in Deuteronomy 31 and 16. I'm not going to be before you guys long. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified be because of them, because of them, because of your enemies, because of what the enemy will keep trying to tell you, because what the enemy will keep trying to show you what you don't have. No. It says, do not be terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. Listen, people of God, there's nothing that we could do to separate us from the love of God. There's nothing that we can do to separate us from the love of God. Yes, like Yolanda said tonight, we will fall short. We're human. We will continue to make mistakes. But remember... There is now for no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You know why? That condemnation comes from the enemy. Now, it should be good when you're convicted to do better, but condemnation comes from the enemy because there's nothing that could separate you from God. You know what happens? We move away from God because we start condemning ourselves. I'm not worthy. I, I went backwards. I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have did that. No. Repent. Be sincere. Here, ask God to take it from you and get back on track so he can make Amen. who he is in your life and you could be all that God has called you to be so you, you could be what God has called you to be and don't make an apology for being what God has called you to be and who he's called you to be in his kingdom because you is his vessel for his good work amen so if anyone is trying to make you feel bad about what God has called you to do, they got to repent because God has called you to do that. And God don't make mistakes. Not if he called you, right? You said you're prospering in that 501. Amen. You're prospering because why God's hand is in it, because God's heart is in it, because you have the heart and the mind of Amen. Christ, even through adversity. Even, even, in, even in adversity and even when you don't make all the right choices. When God called you, he called you. If he gave you an assignment, he gave you an assignment. He ain't taking it back. But when you realize, you ask God to show you yourself. And when you realize and he show you yourself, then you govern yourself accordingly. And that means whether you need to make moves, whether you need to apologize, whatever those things are. But the assignment don't go away. It's still there, no matter the season. It don't stop the assignment. Amen. And then Psalm 9, 9, 10. Psalms, the ninth chapter, verse 9 and verse 10. The Lord is a, a refuge for the oppressed, a strong tower mm -hmm. in the times of trouble. Yeah. Those yeah. who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. This is it right here. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all who wait on the Lord. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, renew their, renew their strength. Strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk okay, and not faint. faint. And let me tell you, I thank God because I literally God, God has renewed my strength tonight. He's renewing your strength, your yes. thunder, and those that yes, are yes, yes. and come in agreement on tonight with this podcast. You declare and decree, Lord, renew my strength. Lord, let me mount up, have wings as eagles. Let me run and not get weary. Hallelujah. I am about to, that's what I pray all the time. Let me run this race, God, and not get weary. Because see, there's a momentum God want us to have. There's a there's a, a momentum he want us to move in, right? And, and in every aspect of our life, not just just a servant in the church, but in the, in the in the workplace, in the in the in the boardrooms, he wants us to have a momentum. You know, when I was doing, I'm um, getting back into it. A lot of insurance, the writing the life insurance, and doing things of that sort. You have to have a momentum, right? Because if you don't have anybody to write or help get educated about life insurance, you may not have a salary. I mean, there was a time when I just did straight. You know, I trusted God and I made more money trusting God than I made in every job I've ever had. Crazy. in six months. But there was a momentum that I had to pray for in that I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to walk in faith. Yolanda, when I tell you, he gave me a momentum and I gave him 
the glory because you know what I said? I was in a work environment where everybody was, they, they God was Buddha. They God was Allah. My God was Jesus. I'm like, I got, I got the almighty God. So God, I want you to show yourself through me who you are. Because I was brand in the office bragging too. Oh no, I, I serve the true and living God. I, was, <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I was talking to the Koreans, the Indians, everybody. But I was like, my God, he shall supply. They was like, how are we going to do this? I don't know. What kind of song? I said, well, my God going to supply all, all of my needs according to my his riches and glory. And I said, God, one day I'll never forget. I said, show yourself strong. I said, God, I want my face on that wall, but not for me to be recognized because I'm sitting here bragging about you. And girl, not even a month later. We I remember you got that. Lord, yeah. <laughs> right, I was posting it. I was like, Lord. And they was like the top, the, the top seller for this month, Jacqueline Wade. And Jacqueline, your face, your your picture, we need to take your professional picture. We putting you up on the Hall of Fame. It was a, a wall, a hallway. Listen, I was, I was in there shouting. Them people probably thought I was crazy. They knew I was silly. But I was like, Lord, you done showed yourself. You done did it, right? I know that's right. And it was the Lord his did power, it. but it was through momentum. Because I surrendered. I cast my care to him. And I said, God, I ain't never take a job where I was straight commission. But Yolanda, to this day, I thank God I was able to buy a home on that faith. Yeah. Ain't that yeah. crazy? I was able to, to literally, I had worked all those years. I was able probably to make more money in six months than I made at any job in my life by trusting him. And I stepped out on faith. And That's God right. Did miraculous things. And so I say that tonight. Continue to walk by faith, people of God. Yolanda, God got you. I love you. I know he does. You, honey. I know I love you. you. And I love you. know I love, I love you more. The momentum you have. I love the tendency, how he's using you as a vessel and how you're giving all the glory back to him. I thank God for our connection. I don't yeah. take it lightly. I don't, um, you know, I'm just praying when God released me. Um, I can visit, I can do some stuff when he released me, but I thank God for it. And I thank God for each person that has joined us on tonight because I can go on and on and go in and in. And I got to cook, so you better <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> I know, I got to cook too. I was going to make it. We got stuff to do tomorrow, but um, I thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, Yolanda will be back for the month of May. Just stay tuned to the podcast. Don't forget to follow us, like us, share this podcast. And again, replay it um, be an evangelist. Share with everybody you know that may be going through grief, that's going through a loss. Look at the other podcast in regards to what Yolanda has shared on grief and 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 how to cope, the mechanism on how to cope and how to help yourself to understand that there is God has given us strategies. This woman of God has shared and poured out again on tonight, and I thank you. I want to close tonight in prayer, and then we will be done. Amen. Amen. So I thank you all. Listen, if someone needs to give their heart to God tonight, I want to offer you the prayer of salvation. I never do this. I've never done this podcast from day one without offering the prayer of salvation. So if you want to give your heart tonight, just pray this simple prayer. Father God, I thank you now for another opportunity that you allow me to come before your presence. I yes, ask sir. you to forgive me of my sins. I That's confess right. with my mm -hmm. mouth and I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you now live in me. Thank you, Lord, that I am saved and I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, listen, you are now saved. You are a born again believer. You have transitioned from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you to continue to walk into your progressive salvation, get in a Bible believing church that you can hear the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, word of God. You have to hear is. the word of God to get strengthened in this walk. Because let me tell you, people of God, we will continue to see the things that is happening on this earth. But those of us, who are the remnant that believe that Jesus is Lord, that God is 
Almighty, listen, we are we are his people. We are his mouth, his ears, and his feet in the earth to do what he called us to do to accomplish Amen. his will because he is still on the throne. So we thank God for you tonight. Let's pray out. And again, I would love for you to continue to be connected. Just stay tuned for when we go on live. I don't do a live every week because God has not led me that way. I have to do how God gives it to me. And when he released me to do that, then I'll do that. But for now, please stay connected. And when we do go live, I'll always post it. Father, we thank you. We thank, thank you. you for another opportunity, God, that you've allowed me and Sister Yolanda to come and to share on tonight, Father. We thank you, Father, for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing. But Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. For eyes have not seen and ears yes, have not God. Heard. What you have is for, for, your people, for those that love you and those that are called according to your purpose and your will. So God, tonight, we lay Yolanda at your feet. Yes, Lord. And Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over her mind over her ears, over her heart. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over her husband's mind, over his ears, over his heart, over his eyes, over her eyes. Cover them like never before, God. As they continue to walk, Lord God, with you, be with them. Give them the supernatural grace to encounter what they have to go through. Father, that they will not feel the sting. And we thank you, hallelujah, for removing everything right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That's Hallelujah, funny. God. Father, we thank you, God, that she will have a testimony. Father, we thank you right now that you've restored her joy. God, we thank you for the peace that has come and hit her family. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for being a comforter. Lord God, we thank you, Father. God, we thank you, Lord God, for doing it now for your child, doing it for for her and her family. And Father, we thank you for her obedience, her heart, her love towards you. Lord God, we yes, thank you for our yes, husband Lord. on tonight. We thank you, Father, that you're still getting the glory out of her life. Continue to use this mighty vessel of God and downpour in her unique strategies to another level, another dimension that she will yes, be Lord, yes, people, God. Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for every heartache. Thank you, Lord. We give thanks to you. for every pain in her life and my life. We give thanks for every situation that we don't understand, but God, you do. And so tonight, we say thank you. Thank you. Because your word you, Lord. told us to give you thanks and to rejoice always. Hallelujah. Because this is your will for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. We, we honor you. you. We glorify you. We praise you, Lord, for being Lord of Lord and King of Kings and above you, there is no other. So we give you honor tonight. We love you with all of our heart, minds, and souls. Continue to order our steps. Holy Spirit, speak to us like never before that we will accomplish what God has set us to do. Let us be empty when God call us home. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We thank you for each person that is dealing with heartache, that's dealing with grief. God, give them the spirit of thankfulness yes, in the midnight hour, in the daytime, God. Let them just cry out. Lord, let them just be able to say, God, I don't know what, but I still say thank you that their hearts may not, not be darkened, that the enemy will not cl cloud their judgment. And their thoughts yes, they have been thinking that they can find a solution in anything other than you. We bind up the hands and the works of the enemy tonight that will try to deceive your people, that will try to hinder their, your work in their lives. Mm -hmm. God, we come against the, the, the sting of death and grief that will try to destroy them prematurely. And we release the power of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God to burn and eradicate everything that will come against the knowledge of you in their life. Hallelujah. And now we thank you for the light, the knowledge, the wisdom that you have imparted in your people that have listened and will listen. God, get your glory out of their lives. And Father, help them to know that it's okay to be human. Help them to know, God, that they can seek help. Help them to know, God, that pride comes before destruction. Lay it at your feet. Ask for deliverance. Get rid of it and humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God that he could 
restore us and put us in our rightful place in his kingdom. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, I texted you earlier and told you one thing and look at the time, huh? You, you, you know you don't know how to act, no. <laughs> it's good. God is so good. But I want but, to talk to you because I do want to talk to you about the book that you mentioned. So we'll talk offline. Okay. But Yolanda, okay. I love you. I love um, you too, darling. Have a blessed day tomorrow and we'll be in touch, okay? All right, love. All right. Have a Bye, blessed everyone. night, everyone. Everyone. Love y'all. This concludes this episode of the Remnant Podcast with Jackie Wade. Once again, I want to thank you for staying tuned to the podcast and be sure to connect with us. You could like us on our Facebook page at the Remnant Podcast with Jackie Wade. You can also follow us on our Instagram page at the Remnant Podcast. We're also available on the other social media platforms such as Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at The Remnant Podcast with Jackie Wade. Again, thank you for joining. I am your host, Jackie Wade.